Welcome back. In this video, we will be talking about word vectors and their relationships. In the last video, we talked about how word vectors powered large language models, LLMs. And as you remember, or if you remember, words were too complex to represent only in two dimensions. So large language models use something called vector spaces. And these vector spaces had hundreds or even thousands of dimensions. And usually, you know, the human mind can't envision a space with that many dimensions, but computers are perfectly capable of reasoning about them and producing useful results. So let me explain relationships within word vectors uh, in this video. Uh, this video is for LLMs, for beginners, so I will uh, keep it a little simple. So if you go back in history, somewhere around 2013, uh, let me use my marker here, um, just a second, yeah, 2013, Google introduced uh, the word to vector library. It's a project, actually. They were experimenting with word vectors for a couple of decades already because they had to uh, build up search engines and the concept really took off when Google announced this project in during this time and what Google did was it analyzed millions of documents and where did it get all, get it all, <laughs> all its documents it got its documents from Google News so Google analyzed millions of uh, documents from Google News to figure out which words tend to appear in similar sentences you can see some clusters forming here um, from Google News, and it started grouping these vectors uh, together, uh, or, or and uh, these words together. And over time, a neural network trained to predict which words co-occur with which other words. For example, if you look at similar words like dogs and cat, they were actually close together in the space. When I talk about the space, I'm trying to do a two-dimensional depiction of a vector space. So these words are somewhat similar and they group together, like I explained, some words can come together because they have, um, they exist, coexist in that space. So what Google found out was, um, you know, Google's word vectors had another property, uh, interesting property. You could actually reason about words using vector arithmetic. So for example, if um, if you look at this next screen, this intriguing property, you could reason using vector arithmetic. So if you take a vector, for example, a word, um, like say <clears throat> the word for a vector for biggest, the word biggest, you can subtract big and add small in it. So you can take the word big, out from it and add small, the word closest would come back with the resulting vector, which was smallest. So let me highlight that for a bit uh, so you can see what I'm referring to. So subtracted big from biggest and added small, and I got this other vector called smallest. So this could be mathematically done, and uh, the resulting vector was smallest. And this kind of um, resulting vector was very powerful in the sense uh, for, you know, uh, drawing things like analogies. For example, if I look at the next one, next picture here, I have, you know, things like, you know, uh, man is to woman as king is to queen. And this is a gender analogy. Let me put that out there, gender. Sorry, gender. And then I have things like this, where I will put the next text, where walking is to walked. Sorry, let me get that pen again. Walking is to walked, as swimming is to swam. So again, so it's a tense, tense type of relationship. So let me put tense there. I think it's already here at the bottom, so I'll just highlight that, right? I'll get this pen again, tense type of analogy. And then uh, country capital. So, you know, Tokyo is to Japan as Beijing is to China. 
so they're capitals, right? So capital Tokyo is the capital of Japan. Similarly, Ottawa is the capital of Canada, and so so and so forth. So this relationship, this relationship, were uh, mapped within these vector spaces, and Google could do these arithmetic to draw um, these kind of analogies and relationships, because these vectors are built from the way humans used words in text, there was this other challenge, um, like I mentioned. Uh, um, in, in this case, I'm talking about Paris is to France, as Berlin is to Germany, you should get capitals. You can do things like unethical is to ethical, and there's an opposite, sorry that it's cut off here, opposites, right? And mouse is to mice, as dollars to dollars, plurals and gender roles, which we looked at before. But like I mentioned, this these texts were derived from words which humans wrote, and they end up reflecting many things which humans do, right? So built from the way humans use words, they end up reflecting many of these biases that are present in human language. So if you take an example where you use, uh, again, vectors, and you use the same arithmetic, doctors minus man, Depending on the text these uh, machine learning models were trained on, you could yield, um, you know, my, minus man plus woman. If you look at the whole equation here, minus man plus woman gives you nurse. And that's a bias. That's bias with text humans have written. And mitigating biases like this is an active area of research, especially when you create these large language models based on vectors which are trained on human text or human produced text and so that's that's it for now um, I will create other videos in the future around word vectors and large language models but this is again important for you to understand how relationships are managed within these word vectors thank you